What's going on guys? TG or Thunder God here. Today, I got a pretty dope topic. I guess you would call this shit a 20K special. It didn't line up like that, but here you go. You got a treat today. Uh, and today with me, I got the leading authority, or if not one of the leading authorities on board. So talk to the people. What's bro. good, bro? What's good? You know, you know, what know what I mean? simply Troy right here. Hey, congratulations on 20K, gang. You know it's only up here. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? Is, we, we, had to, we had to come through, obviously. And I listen, we're talking about board, so I had to get Troy on here. So obviously, sure. check him out. All that good stuff. Literally, you know, my opinions on Boruto, I just listen to him. So that's how it goes. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, today we're doing the Akatsuki versus Kara equal stats because, I mean, obviously Kara going to slam. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> we're we not going to get into the nine equal stats. We know how Boruto scaling get in comparison <laughs> to the early Naruto scaling. So we ain't going to even go down that route. Uh, it's, it's not night and day, night and day. And with the yeah. Akatsuki, we taking the mainstream Akatsuki. That's going to be Obito, Itachi, Pain, Kisame, Conan, Deidara, Sasori, Hidan, Kakuzu. I ain't miss anybody, did I? I don't think I did. I, I, those are like the nah, nine. I'm using. Yeah, that seems about the yeah. yeah, that's about the nine. And then for Kara, we got Jigen Code with the limiters on. Uh, Delta. We're actually gonna use two Deltas here because we want to throw a motto in. And it seems he literally has like another another Delta droid. So it's like yeah, yeah. He had to make one after the first one, self destructed versus Naruto. You know, they were trying to get Intel. He had to blow herself up, so you know he had a few copies. Exactly, around. exactly. Copy and pasted her. So then we got Boro, yes, Kashin Koji, uh, Victor, Deepa, and Kawaki. Uh, you might ask, why didn't I throw Ao in? I didn't want to. His arsenal whack. He got ninja tools. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he, he sucked. And he had a car out of it. That's what I'm... So <laughs> that, honestly, honestly. So, we'll, we'll get into the video. We're going to start this off by talking about a lot of interesting, like, micro battles that can happen. And then we're going to get into the, like, mainstream madness that can happen in this video and stuff like that. So, yeah, for sure. So, for so sure. one of the opening matchups we got is, like, Obito versus Jigen. Bro, why, why don't you lead us off? Talk about this matchup. What's yeah, so the reason why this one, like, is so special and this is so interesting is really just how Kamui will interact with Jigen shrinking and teleportation in general, right? We know what Kamui is, is spatial manipulation. He can suck anything into another dimension. He also phase through objects. But that's typically with things, you know, that he can see, react to, stuff like that. Jigen, he can shrink so small to where Naruto, who can sense on other dimensions and sense all around the planet, he barely can react. And Sasuke, you know, who has the EMS and Renegon, yeah. he barely is able to see Jigen and even see the rods that are shrinking. And even if he does get trapped in a Kamui dimension, he can just teleport out like that. Exactly. And what people don't know about Jigen's teleportation and portal creation is that he can actually just BFR from like, just just a, a eyes view away. So it's extended BFR just like with Kamui. Like if he just has his dojutsu eye on you, he's able to open up a portal around you and encapsulate you in that. So even though Obito can escape this dimension, that's just something to kind of think about. So Kamui snipe and Jigen portal snipe those are both in the conversation as well exactly exactly this also gets more interesting because these are tough probably the toughest hitters and these dudes these dudes ain't touchable that's the main thing and it's gonna be tough for obito obviously like you mentioned naruto sensory and whatnot and this gets even crazier when you look at like the statements made about naruto sensory like surpassing like a ten tails jinchuriki having yeah, understanding of like bro. all things it's like bro what and then you got like he's not able to pinpoint this so it's gonna be tough and that's where the pa passive nature of kamui definitely like aids uh jigen this there, there definitely is a likelihood though that if obito materializes to just catch jigen or if you think like you could uh, like blitz the top the passive timer on the kamui like jigen could potentially do that um if he catches obito correctly but again, it's a kind of debatable. Um, one of the bigger things for like this micro matchup is that Izanagi's also in play. So we kind of saw that this is an interesting thing. Like Obito and like Jigen, like he runs at Jigen, materializes, try and grab him. Jigen shrinks, hits him with the right hook uppercut. Okay, what happened? <laughs> Yo, what? One, two, sleep. Obito obviously gets knocked out, potentially taken down like Renegon rods in his neck. Then he could see some like Izanagi gameplay. What's your thoughts on like the Izanagi round, stuff like that? Yeah, so the, the Izanagi route is always crazy, right? Because with an equal stats matchup like this, Jigen can't just outright one shot. Yeah. So while he's like bleeding out or doing something like that, he can easily Izanagi away and, you know, basically rewrite reality where he coming behind Jigen. But since it again is equal stats, Jigen, at least in the Boruto anime, he can use rods to sense stuff. Like he can see with the rods. He can basically use this type of echo location with the rods. Yeah. So if he has rides already in place in the battlefield, or if he's shrunk rides to like fit in Obito's clothing or in his arm or something like that, he's able to use this to sense Obito as well. So it's like, it'll basically be a never ending battle. 
No, yeah, honestly. And these are definitely like the hardest hitters, which is why it's kind of like its own discussion. Uh, and if you also look at, and I'm going to say this, we have a couple different ones for like the high tiers. And I 100% agree. You could really like, the thing with this high tier area, you could kind of like say whatever. And you could kind of make a case for it just because it's equal stats. Like because everyone's kind of got these insane acts here. Like, for example, if we kind of shift over to like Pain versus Jigen, right? You kind of have like, okay, what if like Jigen shrinks, right? And then Pain uses like Almighty Push. Is this micro dude just gonna go flying? Like, what's going on with that? Like, yeah, he gonna, it, he gonna... it, 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 it'll be kind of weird with it. Like, yeah. how, how does all of these techniques interact with Jigen? Because these are just the two leaders of Akaspi, and this is the one leader of, you know, Car, respectively. So they they just have to be overpowered and broken. Yeah, no, I 1,000% agree. And it definitely gets more interesting when you look at some of the uh, uh, kind of minutia of Jigen, like, his arsenal. And we're going to get into this, like, a little bit later in the video. But his possibility for what he could shrink... It, it's it's bro it's not fair it's not fair yeah it, it, it's almost too ridiculous bro. <laughs> like when you really get into the nitty gritty of it it's like based on the explanation they give us he, he can shrink a lot of stuff yeah Let, let's just say like that. honestly you can make a case he could shrink the pain bodies because they're just dead bodies yeah. with chakra receiving rods <laughs> that are just that are just receiving chakra and stuff like that like do you want to like get yeah. into like Technically, you wanna, they're just not living <laughs> it's not bad do you want to actually explain like jigen's dojutsu and like how it functions for anybody yeah. who's not aware so basically right the main function of his dojutsu is to shrink and enlarge everything including himself that is non-living right so he can't shrink sasuke but he can shrink himself he can shrink his chidori he can shrink his sword mm -hmm. he can possibly even shrink his susana reason why he didn't do it is because he was testing out the defenses speed and ap of the susano just because he's just that strong and just that dumb, yeah you know he also the things that he shrinks goes in a dimension where time doesn't flow so it's like once you're in that dimension, you're kind of just, you know, messed up. You can't really move, can't think, can't do anything. You become in a state of unconsciousness like Naruto and Hinata. But the difference between shrinking in this dimension is that he can't shrink people to get in this dimension. He has to manually open up a portal to encapsulate people within this dimension. Yes, yes. Perfect explanation. And if you kind of look at this, this doesn't even necessarily mean it's over for pain because you could actually argue that. Even if Pain does get BFR'd, or some of the bodies do, he could, if, if the, and this is assuming the animal path is still present, um, he could actually just reverse summoning himself, uh, potentially, you know, just say, uh, back to like, back to like the battlefield. We have a couple instances of this. You can see like Sasuke summoning his hawk in Kaguya's dimension, yep. which is a different time space. Um, we also found out recently in the recent Boruto chapter that Boruto can use FTG to escape another time space. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So all of the all of the data books that go over space time ninjutsu and people, you know, use a teleportation or reverse summoning, like he mentioned, those work. Those are able to get you out of dimensions. Those are able to allow you to escape. Even if we go look at the Jigen and uh, Ishiki fight versus Kashi and Koji, that actually takes place in another dimension. So when Koji swallows himself with the toad and reverse summons away, that's him escaping from that dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, even though, you know, there's a few statements in the manga and the anime it just outright showed to be a completely another dimension. So that's kind of, you know, foreshadowing for the explanation that FTG and reverse summonings can just teleport you out of BFR dimensions. Yeah, yeah. And for anybody who, like, isn't aware of... Um, FTG is a lot closer to the summoning jutsu. The data book also notes it. It's like a variant of that. So it's like, it, it, it is pretty consistent to kind of look at that. Um, and then you also have like all the abilities Pain has. Like, is Jigen going to be able to sense like the Renegon chameleon that can like disclose his presence, but it's also yeah. like, you know, hidden to like, it, I think it's possible for sure. Um, I kind of lean towards it just because Ma and Pa can sense it. And also Naruto yeah. with like minor threat perception can like sense evil intent um, or your like evil, you know, hatred. He can sense it like before Nagato like hits him with it. So there's a lot of interesting stuff. You also have like the the, the jutsu that he places on the dogs that lets them re replicate and whatnot. Oh yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested to see how Jigen interacts with those things because if I'm not mistaken, every time you hit it or damage or kill one head, another one grows. Yeah. So it's almost like you have to destroy the whole body. Exactly. And yeah. The real only technique he has to destroy the entire body of the dog is when he threatened to destroy the leaf village with like this red key blast or energy wave that he was gonna destroy Naruto with. But you know, they stopped him and then he had to be up on Naruto. So maybe if he uses a blast like that, he'll be able to completely destroy the dogs. 
But other than that, his rides just can't get rid of Exactly, him exactly. All. I mean, these are the same dogs. I mean, the counter to this is that he takes down the animal path, but these are the same dogs that actually took down, that, were, that weren't even being grazed by, like, the Ross and Shuriken. Like, and for, for a yep. good, like, comparison, <laughs> the Nine Tails, like, granted, that's a kind of a different encounter, had its whole, like, upper half, like, singed. You look at the animal, like the dog in the top of it. Yo, there's nothing. There's no damage. It's just, it's fine, bro. You gave him a He's treat. He's just fresh. He's just chilling. He, he good. He good. So, nah, it, it's definitely a little difficult. And then you get even, you can even get like further down to like the minutia of like the, like, could the Oceropath just like absorb that like blast that like, you know, Jiga could blow up and stuff oh, like that? Yeah. Because it, it, it's equal states. Yeah, I'm at the Prada Path. I did that in my other video. Like the Prada Path absorbing shit. Yo, <laughs> dudes did not let me live that. I'll be, I'll be getting them mixed up too. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, nah, so there's definitely a lot of interesting bits with Pain versus Jigen. Um, I would actually go on to say, I think Jigen, like, and you can kind of see, like, why Jigen needs to be his own combo. He interacts a lot differently with each of these members, where it's, like, kind of flipped, um, you can flip different conversations depending on. And, obviously, we got to talk yeah. about our third, you know, high tier of the Akatsuki, uh, Itachi. And he tied the man himself, the bro. God. The man who everyone thinks can just take out everybody. <laughs> Yo, man, listen. Regardless of what you think of Itachi, uh, he's going to be player here. Um, We have a lot of interesting yes, dynamics here. One of the bigger ones is, like, Genjutsu and, like, how that might interact. So, what, I know you had a really great perspective on this. Do you want to talk about, like, yeah, Genjutsu so here? Yeah, I got you. I got you. So basically, how I think Genjutsu interacts with Otsutsuki in particular, and people with just, you know, higher dojutsu and higher beings like every Otsutsuki, is I just think they outright resist them, right? We see this with like the infinite Tsukiyomi. I mean, Kaguya resists their own jutsu. And if Jigen truly is like way stronger than Kaguya, he was just on the planet all the time. He didn't just come around and kill her before infinite Tsukiyomi. For his plan to continue, and you know, we know Jigen's not just some stupid guy walking around. He would have to have countermeasures for this, right? Cause we know the light just pierces everything and Sasuke Susano is the only thing to block it. My eyes! So if he was still on this planet, he would have to resist it. This would also explain why Sasuke never uses Genjutsu on people like Momoshiki, on people like Ishigi, on people like Kaguya. Cause we know he still uses it after the war. He uses it versus the girl who can manipulate blood and she has a dojutsu. Mm -hmm. He uses it in the Boruto anime on random people, but when he's fighting these Otsutsuki level threats, he never seems to even attempt this. This is probably because, you know, all dojutsu come from them, all chakra come from them, and even, you know, they have this entire way of evolving to the fourth dimension, yeah. having this omnipotence level jutsu, so maybe they just outright resist him in general. So if Itachi tried like Sukiyomi or something like that, Jigen might just stand there <laughs> and you know, just shrug it off, bro. It's crazy to think. He gonna shrug it off like when the domain expansion breaks, bro. It's gonna be like shattered <laughs> everywhere, bro. It's gonna be nothing. Um, And I, I definitely agree with you and I definitely think there's a precedent to suggest a similar thing in Naruto. I'm with the Renegon and stuff like that. This is a little bit like Pain versus Itachi, but if you want like micro example, this might explain why Ita uh, Kakashi, for example, never tries to visually doju to like pain or something like that with the renegon having its own distinct chakra you could definitely make the case that there's like a bit of a uh, you could say like hierarchy in terms of like the dojutsu and like the resistances go up the higher you get um which would explain a lot of these why why certain abilities aren't used which again is shonen this isn't anything new this is just kind of like what happens in a lot of series so yes, i 100 percent agree um and then you also so there's a lot to be doing that amaterasu i mean not really relevant gonna get absorbed by the karma mark we already saw sasuke's amaterasu just it, nothing garbage uh at least against jigen it, it even got absorbed by kagi yeah bro, like. yeah yeah and Madara, by the way, with no eyes. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, <laughs> yep. it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Um, One of the better win cons for Itachi versus Jigen um, is the Susano. And we, you know, Troy already alluded to this before with like Jigen actually being able to shrink the Susano. Um, you could also make the case yeah. this could actually extend to the Susano spirit weapons and stuff like that. Do you want to like jump in on this or like add, add to this? Oh, yeah. The Totska Blade and the Yadamir, yeah. bro. So, what would be the line of thinking that leads me to believe that these can be shrunk just like everything else? Is because if you didn't know, chakra is just spiritual in nature, right? Spiritual and physical energy intertwine inside of chakra. So, it's all inside there with Singons, it's all inside everything. We've also seen Naruto's chakra arms just interact with souls and spirits. So, those being shrunk and those being components of chakra in general, Jigen's able to shrink Naruto's Rasengan's, he's able to shrink fire, 
and, and this is natural fire too. This is hell yeah. fire that never stops burning from one of the sages mountains. He's able to shrink all of those. So that's nature energy, spiritual energy, and physical energy is able to shrink any of those. So the Tosca blade being a spiritual weapon, it should follow that it's just able to get shrunk as well, right? And, and, and that includes the Yadamir. Yeah. And Susano, since it's just a mass of chocolate. Yeah, I, Anything he can see can be shrunk. No, I 100% agree. Um, And just to like bounce off what you said too, you can even see this with like Obito and how he's literally dead, yet his chakra is able to transfer like from his spirit to Kakashi as well. And the Kakashi just gains his new dojutsu and stuff like that. So I 1000% I agree with everything you're saying. Um, And I definitely think it paints the idea that Itachi is not as strong to like as relevant against Jigen as Pain or Obito would be. That does not mean Itachi's not relevant because he is like against everybody else. It's just like Jigen's kind of his own combo and stuff like that. Yeah, I would say Jigen's just a different beast. I mean, we were saying that at the beginning of the video, bro. Jigen, for the most part, is just the most important member of Kara. Yeah. Has the best hacks, has the best interaction with everyone, and just has the best means to the end. Yeah. Yeah, and if you want to look at this, right, because we'll kind of like segue into other members for now, but I want to talk about like why why is Jigen so strong? Because if you start looking at the other possibilities with his like uh, versus him versus some other member members, you could really get into some crazy stuff. You could argue he shrinks the Chewbacca yeah. Tensei, like the gra <laughs> the gravity sphere yeah. that's pulling all that in, the Astroupments. You could argue he sh shrinks Sorcery himself because he's literally yeah. You yeah go ahead, bro. Talk. You, you you can argue if Kakazu, you know, whips out all of his hearts. You know, people love to hype up that guy. He just <laughs> shrinks all of them, bro. He just he just shrinks the shrinks the hearts themselves, shrinks all the ninjutsu. And and people don't know this, but after he shrinks something, it's still going in the you know the dimension where time doesn't flow. Because you know, if time's not flowing, time's not moving. The chakra's not extinguished. Yeah. So let's say he shrinks like a Chibaku Tensei. He can just unshrink it on top of somebody else. Oh, so we can have Data oh, running on the battlefield and he just unshrinks a Chewbacca Tensei and he just crashes on him. It's him. over. It's <laughs> over. Yo, it's so bad. It's actually crazy. Like his hundred puppets, he gonna be like Ant-Man in Civil War. You know he throwing them discs that start yes, shrinking sir. everything? No one is safe from this man. He's a demon. All of his hundred puppets, you can say Conan's paper, like he just turns her into origami. Oh, we can, we can give her, we can give her a prep time of the sea of paper bombs <laughs> he just shrieks all of it it's over, ain't nothing bro. stopping this so jigen definitely needs to be his conversation and he's definitely one of the more forward players uh it, on the car side here's the thing too the bfr point stands because he can throw any akatsuki member in another dimension where time doesn't flow by spawning a portal on them and you can look at the kawaki example yeah. where he literally like does that to naruto and hinata and just well spoilers yeah and he also does it to boruto like the very next exactly chapter. he tries to spawn a portal around boruto and boruto has to use karma to disrupt exactly it. exactly and i think one of the more interesting arguments is like okay like what if obito like resonates with that kind of similar to what he did in the kaguya dimension but then, like, Ooh. he just, you know what I'm saying? He kind of tracks, like, the tr the space-time signature in a similar degree. But then, like, if he decides to go in, he gonna be in a dimension where time doesn't flow and get paralyzed. Ooh, exactly. Like, like, like what, what if he just doesn't know that time is not flowing? He's like, oh, a dimension here. You know, he tries to go grab maybe a Tosca blade <laughs> yeah. or Yadamir. Yeah. He gets in there. He just passes out. It's he, just, he just stuck now. It's bro. over. It's over. So Jigen, definitely a different animal, um, which is why we want to take a second and talk about the, the him versus the high tier and stuff like that. And you could really just say, I, I'll, I'll bring it up, though. In my opinion, like, undisputed, uh, uh, indisputably, like, Jigen does take a lot of Ws, like, pretty much 1v1. I think against, like, pretty much everybody with the argument for Obito and Pain kind of being the exception. Everybody else. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. And that's only because they have, like, extremely rare hats. Yeah. Right. yeah. I 1000% agree. So we can start getting into some other matchups. Um, an interesting one might be like Deepa versus Kakazu. You know, you kind of have Diamond uh, more, like yeah. Diamond Armor versus Carbon Armor, um, like the Carbon Armor. And it, it gets, yeah. gets interesting. What, what's your opinion on this based on like Deepa in the anime and like what we kind of saw of him? Yeah. So, I mean, Deepa in the anime, especially when, you know, he gets like his advanced Diamond Armor or whatever, it just seems like he could take way more than Kakazu, yeah. right? Because Kakazu, I'm pretty sure when he gets his armor, he like slows down, can't move, and there's like a bunch of drawbacks. Yeah, right? though, I'll say real quick the whole deal with this diamond morph or like diamond armor, however you want to say it, uh, like translation wise, is that the body part that is like hardened can't move. So if he makes his whole body like hard, pause. Um, it, it just, it, it just, it, yo, it, 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 he not gonna be able to move. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he makes his like he hardens his fist and then starts punching dudes and stuff like that. So you could actually make a case. Yeah. Deepa might have an advantage because he could be mobile with his uh, carbon armor. But continue. Exactly, because when when he has his armor on, 
he can still move crazy, yeah. right? He's still running around, zipping around, reacting, throwing out attacks. It, it, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. It takes like a full combined sage mode, a laser compressed yeah. machine gun on top of a showering gun app sorry to break his arm. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. And then even his like projectile cubes, he can like shoot out like finite amount yeah. of mini cubes. And then we also see when they're like focused and uh, uh, compressed, he can actually even bypass like Shinky's iron sand. And even if you like want to say it's like relative to like the sorcery fight iron sand, like someone of Tsunade relative strength is just punching that and there's no there's no like damage at all. Yeah, it's it's, it's ridiculous. It, it, the bro. iron sand's crap. And, and he he can control these with ease. So like he can he can basically rain them down on like an opponent or maybe on the the heart's mass cracking them and destroying the bodies and then just bring them back to his side. Yeah, honestly, right. honestly. So he just has so much things that he can. I do. agree. Whereas like Kakazu, you know, it's kind of a little difficult because. His best way, he kind of replicates what Deepa does, but worse. So, at, at the end of the yeah. day, like, we're going to get off this suspect matchup, like, with these dudes who are trying to get <laughs> hard for one another. This, let me, let me, yeah. It ain't a good look. It ain't a good look. I, I don't yeah, want to say it anymore. Good look, I don't want to say it anymore. So, we're going to keep it moving. Um, another interesting micro interact you can see is, like, Boro versus Sorcery. You know, he kind of oh. poison versus poison virus. I mean, Boro is pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Lava, water, and earth. He also has insane regen, like pretty much unbeatable unless you take out his core. Yeah, the, yeah talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I would say the only way to the only way to get rid of his regen, like seriously, the only way he can re he can regen the heads, brains, hearts, lungs, yeah. is if you get rid of the core. And getting rid of the core isn't as easy as oh, it's in his stomach, just blow out his stomach, yeah. right? Pause. Oh. It's just that you know <laughs> he can use hand signs to move it around, right? So even if you blow out his stomach cards again, <laughs> he can put it inside of his head, bro. And then this is equal stats as well, so they both react to each other. But I, I find the most interesting part of this matchup is that their two main things, poison and virus, wouldn't affect <laughs> yeah, them. That's what I'm so it's like they have to use other means, but it's like sorcery. He has to use like his flamethrowers he has in puppet form. Yeah. And then Boro has to use his, you know, lava style, water style, earth style, stuff like that. No, I 100% I agree. Because obviously, like, Boro's not going to, he's not going to be really affected by the poison because he just doesn't have, like, a similar biology. He's, he's, he's like, not human. Like, there's nothing, there's no real way yeah. to argue, like, Sasu's poison. He, he's completely scientific ninja Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. And then, like, you know, obviously, like, Boro's virus, you have to actually inhale it. So, again, Sasu doesn't have that because he has lungs. I would actually say yep. you could actually potentially make an edge just due to Sasu's core being easier to locate. But then you also have the fact that Sasu could turn this into, like, 101 versus 1 with, like, the 100 puppets and stuff like that. Which might, oh, yeah. which is kind of, like, it's, like, interesting. Because, like, what if, them, what if one of them cracks the heart and then Boro starts going crazy, rampaging? He look weird, goofy with all the art, like... He legs and arms protruding out of him and stuff like that. So there really, yeah, crazy. there really is a lot of potential in this matchup as well. I might, I, I might lean towards Sorcery just because like he could make it a numbers advantage. But at the same time, right, like just due to how difficult it is to put down Boro, he also does have Lava Style, which has pretty crazy AP implications. So you can also say like, okay, you know, and we, we saw May and like melting Susano and stuff like that. That might be enough to just melt the wooden puppet. So again, right? Also depending. You know what's kind of crazy, yeah, bro? Right? If Sasori comes in with the hundred puppets, all the flamethrowers and stuff like that, and he just, you know, zips around, cutting up all his body, burning the core and stuff like that, then he wins, yeah. right? But if he destroys the core and allows Boro to turn into like his giant form, that's a huge speed and power yeah. boost. Boro might just honestly crush all of the puppets and Sasori. Yeah. So Sasori would just have to end this battle quickly, and he can't let Boro become unstable. Yeah. He becomes unstable once the core is messed up, because you know his body's completely scientific ninja tool, and to regenerate it has to stabilize with the core. Mm -hmm. Right. So once the core is gone, he's no longer stable. He turns giant and you know way more powerful and out of way. Yeah. I 100% agree. And then you have like insane implications for Sorcery uh, with like his Iron Sand, like the mass AoE that he could potentially do. Get, get into that later, but there is a lot to that. Um, another interesting battle is Kisame versus Delta. Um, and I, in my opinion, I think we agree on this. This is not, a, well, it, it's an interesting matchup conceptually, but when you get into what Delta has and how Kisame fundamentally interacts with that, he does not have a good time here, honestly speaking. Yeah, he, 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 he gets done, he is done dirty by my <laughs> It's Huge Delta respect. <laughs> we love Delta out here. We do respect Delta. Shout yes, out, sir. shout out. No, honestly. So there, there, there's a couple of aspects. Do you want to talk about the potential of like Hisame, like being able to siphon some of her chakra and like, why that probably wouldn't work here? So the thing about Delta, right, is she she, she does have chakra, yeah. right? 
she also is a scientific ninja tool at the end of the day. And her eyes are able to not only just absorb jutsu, so whatever, you know, he releases, they're able to absorb it and re-release it towards Kisame. So it'll kind of get into a battle of, you know, him just reabsorbing his own chakra. Her main thing is these durability negating and, and regeneration negating, more specifically, laser beams, right? These are light beams fired from her eyes. You know, they can either be super pinpoint or have a big explosion. You know, we see that in the anime, she destroys a whole science factory with one of yeah. those. And he's not going to be able to absorb these. These negate durability and negate regeneration. So after he gets hit, Samihada's not going to be able to regen. You know, fuse with him or regen. He's not going to be able to regen. He, he's just done, right? One of these beams touches him, it's over. And this is the equal stance. Him well, and his so, sword, too. Because you know, Samihada can take damage. Yeah. It's a living organism. Yeah, so I 100% agree. And then when you get into the fact that Delta can fly, like Ariel... Oh, oh my yeah. God! Cut. It's over. It's over. Cut, it's bro. over. He gonna make. She gonna make fish fillet, bro, out of him, bro. It's not. <laughs> it's not good. And, and, bro, bro. And what makes it even worse is, is Samihada is always trying to go after you know more chakra and what chakra is more tastier. He's gonna see the bean, you know, thinking it's sweet. Try to absorb it, and he's cooked. It's bro. over, bro. He, he, he's, he's cooked. It, it, it's easy. 100%. 100%. So that's like Delta D1. We're going to go into D2. We got double Ds. Like, you pause. But yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. We got we got, <laughs> we got the twins. Uh, and essentially, another interesting matchup is like Conan versus Delta. Like, queens of the Akatsuki and uh, Akara. Yes, sir. So, like, one of the interesting things is like how... Conan would interact with Delta's like eye beams and whatnot because that's the biggest thing right because oh, yeah. Conan in character she like she's kind of similar to Obito in a roundabout way where like she can take damage but she like fizzles through it so for example like Jiraiya hits her with like a fire style and she's unaffected despite like fire being like a natural weakness to her paper it actually like oh, is yeah. what the, the one thing that takes her down is like oil sticking the paper together so in character she would actually just try to like shoot like if Delta shot the beams she would try to like just phase through it with the paper and whatnot. How do you think like Delta's eye beams would fare against like the dance of the Shikigami? That's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of a weird one because it's like yeah. they neg regeneration, but it's not really like she's regenerating, yeah. bro. It, it's kind of like if you blow that piece away, it'll just be made up with other pieces. Not like the the the, the pieces are just spawning in and like reconnecting exactly. with each other. It's just completely new pieces of paper. Yeah. So she might just like blow off her arm, you know. She's able to bypass this regeneration negating beam by just having more paper come in and spawn and make a new arm, yeah. right? Because she's even able to smother people with her paper. Exactly, exactly. So you can make some arguments. So, it's weird. You gonna say like, okay, she's gonna blow up Delta's extendable limbs, like um, the scientific ninja tools with like her paper yeah. bombs and whatnot. But it is an interesting matchup. I thought this one was kind of like in interesting because it's kind of like unstoppable force immovable object a little bit like how yeah. does how does like what, what how do you really hit that as well Bruh. she really like low-key a counter as well because i'm not even sure if delta's eye beams well not eye beams her eye like dojutsu scientific digital eye that absorbs you know jutsu and spit them back out i don't i don't even know how that would work for paper yeah. like would it be able to spit out the paper and if it does won't it just become part of conan again yeah yeah it's really it's weird, man. It's like, I, I wouldn't make the case that, like, Conan, or not Conan, Delta could probably absorb the paper bombs with her eye. It doesn't seem likely, honestly, because it's like a physical object. It's not a jutsu. But, yeah. and, you know, we do know Conan also can, like, almost nuke herself. So, depending if she might try that, there could be a case. Again, we kind of lean towards Conan, but this is another interesting matchup. Um, one I'm really fascinated about, and I really want to get your perspective, uh, Code versus Obito. Because a lot of comparisons, um, there are some comparisons made uh, with Code's, like, claw marks. Potentially, like, um, and how they compare to, like, Minato's, like, FTG markings and stuff like that. You know, I, with Minato teleporting be uh, below, and obviously Obito yeah. with, like, time-space ninjutsu surpassing Minato's, and then Tobirama's, which is, like, you know, not as good, but A. How dare you! So, wh what's your opinion on this? Because this is a really cool matchup. So, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, right, if, if we go with, you know, anime and manga included, right, Code has this thing, let's say, for example, if Obito were to shoot, like, a fireball jutsu, right? He can spawn like a claw mark on his chest and it'll just pass right through him and go to where the other claw marks are. Right, so yeah. like if he put one claw mark behind Obito, you know, without Obito noticing and the fireball juice will just pass through him, it'll hit Obito in the back. Right. Also, Code typically just starts the battle with throwing around claw marks and, you know, seeing where he can maneuver around the battlefield at. So even if Obito were to like, let's say try to combo with Code away since his is equal stats. Yeah. 
Cold would just be able to escape via the claw marks because his claw marks do work on dimensional travel. Yeah. We see that when Jigen takes him to another dimension, he's able to place a claw mark there so he can now travel to that dimension anytime he wants. Since he doesn't have space time in Jutsu like Otsutsu. Yeah. No, that, that's a great way of putting it. So it actually might be the case that like Code is kind of like a bad matchup. And then the thing with Obito BFRing anybody in this free for all is that so I've made I've made this argument before, but I do think there is a precedent to suggest that when Obito sends somebody to the Kamui dimension, um, they end up in a different space because he pulls out stuff in completely different locations, right? He's able to pull weapons out, he's able to pull out like these big rods. Um uh, you pause again. Uh, he's also able, like we see when uh, <laughs> we see when Karin and Sasuke are in the Kamui dimension, Obito can have a full-on fight with like Donzo's aides, and they don't see him at all, right? So it kind of gets into the question of like, okay, would they be able to like, would any of these car members be able to sense where Obito's like reappearing in the Kamui dimension? Because that's probably what Kakashi did. He was probably like using a Sharingan, yeah. like tracking his uh, chakra signature and whatnot. Because pretty much, it we ne nobody in the Kamui dimension ever makes distinct notes. In which case, it's also interesting. So you could actually say, and you could be you could be extra with it too. Like if Code actually does get BFR'd, he could leave like claw marks in the Kamui dimension and then just start like teleporting around when he like if he senses Obito or can like pinpoint that location as well. So there's a lot of really cool situations and stuff like that. What what's your opinion on like you know? Because I know we talked about Jigen. How do you think all of these people fare with like a BFR and stuff like that? Because that's probably I, okay. yeah yeah. So so basically right we're going like one by one right right off the bat victor delta boro and and just and the other delta by the way yeah. and deeper don't they, they, they they're done yeah. they're done and as, as soon as they get bfr they're cooked right code the only way he can escape is if he already placed you know a claw mark on the ground beforehand hoji is a nice one because he's a sage he could just reverse summon out yep. there like he did for the Ishiki dimension. Yep. And you know, of course, Jigen just has portals. Yep. If you want to include Kawaki, uh, Ka Kawaki also just has portals, you know. Yep. Same thing as Jigen with the combo. Yeah, mark. exactly. So, it, it, Obito's powerful, but it actually seems like Code is like, and it, Code kind of fights like Minato and some, like kind of a, where he like litters the battlefield with like FTG Kunai. Like Code kind of yes, does sir, like a similar yes, thing. So, you know, game recognizes yeah. game, obviously. So that, that's an interesting one. Um, Another cool one is Itachi versus Kashi and Koji. Since like for some reason Itachi versus Jiraiya like it's still a topic to people. Oh uh, yeah, it, you know? it comes all the way from that part one, you know, where he meets Kisame and Itachi, <laughs> and they're like, oh, we can't leave this battle unscathed, or you know, he might beat us or something like that. You know, the Jiraiya hype that the, was in the, part one. The, for some reason, they were kept. <laughs> the number one liar in the series was like, yeah, bro, we gonna lose, and then he's smiling exactly, in his mind, bro. bro. Stop it. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of interesting um, scenarios you can have uh, happen here. One of the interesting ones, because, you know, Itachi fights with, like, clones, exploding clones, like, clo uh, clones yes, and stuff like that, or um, crows. What what do you think about, like, Amaterasu versus Hellfire? You know what I'm saying? What, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one, right? Because while Hellfire, you know, it is always burning just like Amaterasu, and, you know, it sages great flames somewhere from the mountain. Amaterasu just burns anything, bro. It, it burns fire, right? And and it doesn't stop until whatever it's on is completely consumed. Yeah. It was it was in the rain, bro. At the Uchiha hideout, Amaterasu was still on the Uchiha hideout while the rain was just raining down on yeah. him. And they clashed fire style, fireball jutsus, and Amaterasu overtook both flames, bro. Yeah. So it's like, once they meet, Amaterasu's just gonna gradually overtake Hellfire. Because while they both don't extinguish, Hellfire ain't burning fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we see that. Amaterasu is burning fire. 100%. We see that with, like, um, obviously, uh, Itachi's Amaterasu just, like, eating up Sasuke's fireball. Um, an interesting yep. note, like, something I like to bring up when talking about Amaterasu for, like, people to kind of know. We actually see a Kaguya's dimension when, like, Naruto and Sasuke are frozen solid, right? Naruto, you know, he's, he's it's commonly considered strong in Sasuke. He can't flex out of it. The truth seeking orbs, which just, like, negate everything can't break out of the ice and then you got a Amaterasu Ooh, right. who just starts melting it. How crazy is yes, that? Sir. It's like, it's nutty, it's nutty. So the actual heat in Amaterasu is insanely prevalent. So you can actually see a situation where like, you kind of have like this fire versus fire showdown, which Amaterasu should win. 
Um, obviously, Itachi Spirit Weapons would be very relevant here. That would be like probably pretty detrimental to Kashi and Koji. Oh, yeah. If he gets hit by Tosca Blade, bro, it's, it's GG. GG. That happens. It, it's just over. It's, that's a lot of people, by the way, for like for just like on this list. Like Tosca Blade's obviously yeah. insanely broken. Um, Yadimir does defend against a lot of basic ninjutsu as well. So Itachi should have an inch, a pretty good time in this encounter as well. But Genjutsu also could just be a potential win con because it seems like and you know you just brought this up to me like kashi and koji is like more natural he bleeds and he just seems like less he seems less modified than the other cyborgs and whatnot so you could yeah. potentially make a case for him as opposed to the other members where it's like we even see um in like the sasuke uh i don't know i believe it's i forget if it's shinden or retsuden like the wanga um but like you actually can't genjutsu glass eyes as well which also like lends itself to like the delta being genjutsu argument as well like it, that it really yep. wouldn't be effective so it just kind of goes to show like genjutsu in this discussion isn't the best but in some members it could be relevant and then for like some bottom lickers like we got hidan versus victor uh i'm gonna be honest hidan loses pretty badly against a lot of these <laughs> card members <laughs> like like i brought this up in the akatsuki free for all uh, dudes were joking about it that hidan could like lick blood off the floor which is if that if that's y'all's goat and that's how y'all have him winning. <laughs> that says a lot. That says a lot about it. Uh, but him, like most of these car members don't bleed. Maybe if you want to say like Kashin or Code, maybe if he wants to go lick some blood, be gross as shit, obviously. Um, Victor's also kind of interesting because he has pretty insane regeneration. Do you want to talk about Victor? Oh, yeah. It, it, Victor's regeneration, because like the, the only time we even see him fight, you know, is basically versus Orochimaru. And Orochimaru and Boruto era has perfect regeneration. You know, he's discovered it. He can regen all like all limbs and his entire body pretty much instantaneously. Victor has almost perfect regen. He can regen all of his limbs, but like his leg and I think one of his eyes. Yeah. So if Hidan was to lick up blood and try to kill him, Victor's basically immortal. You have to pretty much destroy his whole body. So yeah, yeah, it, 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 he'll just be stabbing himself for no reason. While Victor's just regenerating. Bro. I 1000% agree. He, he can't die. I 1000% agree. So, you know, it's it's like the one dude who Hidan might have a chance against. Just kind of like, you know, it doesn't look too good and stuff like that. So, and, yeah. and Victor also has some like good jutsu. He's like kind of, he, like he can use all of the elemental release. He's kind of like. Oh yeah, he can use all nature transformation. He also like sprout two more arms. Bro. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, like bro looking like. Uh, he, what was that? Sakuna's like final form, bro. Yeah, the uh, the fucking high air Sakuna. Yeah, bro. man. Yeah, man. And then like you could also get into like again. I'm just we're gonna keep going with some of these micro matchups before we get into the free for all. Bear with us. It, this feels a lot. Like we're trying to compartmentalize yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's nine v nine for God's sake. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we got like you know Conan versus Kashin Koji. This one's interesting because like you kind of argue like how would the Eternal Fire do against like the Angelic Dance of the Shikigami. Yeah. Like, it's eternal, right? So is it like, can Conan like separate herself from like the pop parts of paper that are burning and just kind of like let those burn? Or is it like gonna just like all of hers just gonna stay burning forever? You know what I'm saying? Like it's a- Oh yeah, you're, you're right. Like will it basically continuously spread or will it just stop at once she's disconnected, right? It's basically like uh, the Jiraiya versus Conan fight all over again, but this time with like a perfected Jiraiya, yeah. right? Cause he has everything Jiraiya has. But now he's a perfect sage. Uh, now he has stronger toads, better fire style, better Rasengan's. Uh -huh. So if he, if he covers her in oil, you know, lights her up with the fires that uh, never stops, she, she's pretty much cooked, literally. I 100% I, I agree. And this gets even worse if you imply like Koji up what you said has everything what Jiraiya has. If he has some sort of toad oil, which I would assume, like I think that's entirely fair to make that ju um, jump. Yes, sir. That just, that's it. That's it. That's that. She going to... He's gonna be caught in his gunk and it's not gonna be a good look bro it's gonna be nasty so yeah that's not that's nothing not, nothing too crazy there um another micro interesting one kawaki versus datara um you know how he might deal with like datara's explosive birds like the distance oh, and stuff yeah. like that could would you make the case i'm curious like the karma mark could have absorbed some of like the uh, datara's clay explosives like what do you feel about that yeah it, it'll definitely once it explodes or even you could probably argue before it explodes but definitely once it explodes, he's absorbing. Yeah. Right? And people don't know this about Kawuki, but Kawuki's body is also just a scientific ninja tool, like all, even down to his cells. So he can extend his limbs, throw out explosive arms and stuff like that, make shields, all of that. And he can just use laser beams as well. And we see some of his laser beams cover pretty much like like half a force or all the force. So. Yeah. He's making bigger explosions than Data. 
and he's absorbing the ones that Daedara makes anyway. Yeah. No, I, I 100% agree. Um, and even Daedara's, like, arsenal is kind of different because you have, like, C4, right? Like, the microscopic bombs, which this is, yeah. this is like, a hit or miss because, A, I mean, it either hits his squad unless, like, the Sharingan users are like, yo, get out the way, and then everyone else is going to hear, too, which doesn't really work. Um, and it also, like, brings into question, like, most of Kara may, like, can either just teleport out, fly out of range if they, like, are get made aware of it, or just don't breathe. Like in oxygen, you know what I'm saying? Because they're cyborgs. Like it's a little, oh, it's yeah. a little. It's like, is this <laughs> yeah. really that relevant? Like, does this this might actually hinder the Akatsuki side more? So while while it could be effective, it's like you know, it's a little. What, what, what you think about it? It, it, it gets crazier, bro. Because you know, in, in the time stop dimension, there's probably no oxygen. You know, there's no time. Yeah. Ka it's gonna be oxygen. Kawaki breathes in there. Delta, she's completely robotic. Unlike you know, unlike the other one, she's just an outright robot. Yeah. Oro. Regen all of his stuff, so you know he doesn't need oxygen. And they're pretty much cooked besides Koji. Koji might need oxygen, yeah, but that's pretty much the only one. Jigen, you know, he's from space, yeah. so nah, nah, it's, he's not gonna need oxygen. It's bad, it's bad. So that's yeah. another interesting one, too. And obviously, you have like you know, Kawaki also does have a lot of range jutsu as well, like just shoot beams out from his hand as well. So it's like Bro, yes, he could sir. just he gonna be trying to he gonna have the scope sniper and just be trying to shoot data and down and stuff like that. So again, right, like we're gonna kind of move on. Like, there's a lot of interesting micro matchups and stuff like that. These were like some of the more interesting ones we were kind of outlying. But now we can actually get into like the free for all and like the chaos of the battlefield and stuff like that. Cause like, listen, yes, y'all ever seen like Storm Revolution, like the intro for that and how like. It's like Hashirama's fighting like Rasa and like, you know what I'm talking about? It's, oh, it's yeah. like nutty. It's like nutty. That's what <laughs> yeah. this is. You ain't, No one's going to know what's going on and stuff like that. Um, And I will say as a preface too, uh, we were talking about this. The Akatsuki overall should have like better teamwork and synergy as they travel in pairs. So for example, like Kidan and yeah. Kakuzu do have combo moves and stuff like that. I mean, obviously like both pairs do have knowledge on each other's abilities. So you could actually make some inferences like, okay, maybe like Kisame sticks close to Itachi, Conan sticks close to Pain and stuff like that, which yeah. actually would aid the Akatsuki a lot more here. Whereas Kara, they, they don't care, man. But what I'm talking yeah, about I'm gonna it. say, yeah. I'm pretty sure Delta just outright hates everyone. I mean, she destroys a table in front of Jigen. Uh, she's not. She doesn't know boils a hologram, but she tries to yeah, kick his stomach yeah. off. You know, she she pretty much hates everyone. Code also only pretty much cares about Jigen. So the only team where we'll probably see it is you know, Jigen and Code, if any. Right, Jigen is a loner as well. Yeah. Kawaki's not gonna work any, with anyone because Jigen beat him as a kid. Code beat him as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Delta hates everyone. Uh, Victor got betrayed by Kash and Goji. Koji also betrayed Jigen and the rest of the people in Kara. It's just a bunch of backstabbers in one group, right? It's just a bunch of backstabbers and criminals grass, with a bro. similar goal. <laughs> honestly, yeah. honestly. So, obviously, the Katsuki would come in. Um, They also do have... There's a lot of interesting stuff. Obviously, we talked about Obito and Jigen, but, like, you know how Obito is running through, like, the mist, Shinobi? It's going to be like that with Kara, and then you got Jigen who's going to be like Ant-Man just jumping around and stuff like that. So, the, <laughs> yep. these dudes going to be picking their licks. Like, they, they really could just take anybody 1v1, and we can't really sit here and tell you who they're going to fight. Um, maybe you could say, like, Jigen sees the Renegon, and he like, bet, I'm going to take you out first. Maybe recognizes the threat there. Um, Obito might see, like, might, might be maybe seeing Jigen, like, pop up and stuff like that, but realistically like these dudes can go on and select whoever they want to go fight pretty much it's just like yeah. the, the the part that's kind of crazy is you know the the way jigen fights specifically is he you know minimizes rods and places them on people right so he did it with naruto and sasuke yeah. he'll basically like place it on naruto's arm or place it by a lung for sasuke and re-enlarge them so they can stab him, right so if you know he starts to battle he has rods everywhere that's waiting to be enlarged we, we already know he dons getting cooked, right? He dons getting cooked. Cock is when his hearts are getting cooked. Sasori's getting cooked. It, it, the, the battle could just as well go like yeah. that. It, it's it's pretty insane. And then, like, you also have, like, Obito, who's, like, on a similar type tier. And obviously not as crazy, but we do know he will literally just materialize behind you and just be up are you if you're preoccupied Well, he tried to snake uh, yep. Minato as well. So it also goes like he could just see a 1v, like a couple 1v1s going on, maybe a group battle and just be like, all right, give me a neck. I'm gonna, you know, fake your neck, like all that stuff. <laughs> so he, he grabbed me stuff like that. So these two are really just like, however you want to say, but they're really going to be animals running across. Pain's also pretty crazy. Um, we, we, we could talk about this like large scale Shinra Tensei. 
is oh, yeah. pretty disastrous for like like a big part of the group. Um, the, the one thing that sucks about this is that it just nukes everybody, which is like, okay, is Payne really going to be willing to do that? Is he really going to like nuke his old squad? Um, he can reverse summon like the other paths and just do this, but again, it's going to be the Diva Path weekend. Um, and again, yeah. Chibaku tends is the same thing, unless Jigen shrinks it, which he probably would, but that's going to be a big issue for like the car members and stuff like that. Like, do you see any car members that could potentially like do something about these two like large scale, like AOE like type moves? The only, the only one, because Boro and Code's getting done dirty. Yeah. Passion code just getting dirty. Maybe Delta and Kawaki could like beam them away. But but what's kind of crazy about it is the data book basically implies that Shinra Tensei negates Jutsu and everything, negates Chakra, everything. right? Everything. It's, it's, so, it's, so it's like, would these beams even do anything? Would they get negated? You know, it, it, it's just stuff like it's, that. It's bad. It's bad. And the thing about Pain too is Pain can see the buildup of Chakra and Chakra movement. Like the Renegon has like a sensory mode too. So he, oh, yeah. yeah, like people don't know that, like, or people don't note that enough. Like he can literally see barriers. He can literally see Naruto Sage energy. So you could say like he could sense Kashin Koji's in Sage mode and whatnot. Like there's all these like the the Pain's Renegon's pretty um important here. And the fact like he's definitely one of the more hacks fighters on the on the top teams on the Akatsuki side. So there's a lot he can do, and there's a lot of ways. And he does have the potential to just nuke everybody as well if he decides to. Um, Pain summons are pretty bad as well. Um, if for like the Kara side, the Chameleon that's just gonna be slipping around. That can only be sensed by like sage creatures. That's gonna be tough for people. That's if like if like the diva path chills in there, bop, slap you, or like pulls them in and like fight somebody in there. That's gonna be crazy. You have the replicating dog, which we mentioned earlier. Uh, most uh, it's kind of interesting because you also have like okay, would like Delta's eye beams like permanently put down this dog? You know what I'm saying? Because they can negate oh, regen. Yeah. You know like what what happens with that? Like that's that's a weird. It's like a weird combo. Like, do you, do you have any thoughts? Like, it's just a weird fucking point. Yeah, I, I was thinking because it like got me stuck. Cause I'm like, maybe, but it, it, then again, it's not conventional region. It's more like making a whole new organism. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's like if she nags one head, it'll just grow another. It's like a hydra. It's, it's literally a hydra. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it's so I mean yeah. maybe. But also maybe not. It's very interesting. Know? It's very interesting. And like obviously Delta is pretty crazy too. Cause you got Delta one and Delta Delta two flying around like like Cyclops, just shooting dudes out in the air and shit like that. Like that one like Legends of Zelda like enemy that be <laughs> yeah. sniping you from far the fuck away. Yeah. Forgot the name, but you know what I'm talking about. Like the crazy mech. It's like they could do yeah. so much fun stuff. So they could just be like aerial like snipers just shooting around with the eye beams and stuff like that. They, they got three people who can fly, bro. They got two deltas. And G. Yeah, yeah. And Akoski, what? If you want to say pain, maybe pain like Datera, like maybe Sasori, if he like makes the third Kazakage fly, it's like it, it, there's like not and like Datera is getting shot out of the sky, bro. He gonna get he he alerted the alarms. They're gonna knock him out. So again, right? There's a lot of interesting ways like Delta can kind of like interact with the group and stuff like that. Um, obviously you have ways to mitigate this. Like you have um Itachi's Yadamir, like omnidirectional, so maybe he can like. Well, I think it is at least, you know, deb debate what you want. At least one yeah, 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 whatever yeah. you think on that. <laughs> yeah. My bad. Whoops, hot take. But uh, essentially, you could also, <laughs> for some reason, but you could have Itachi, like, fly around, like, go to different parts of the battlefield to defend from that and stuff like that. It, potentially, like, swing stuff like that. So, you guys are paying, like, Bancho tending out the air. Dater, like, send the third Kazekage in the air to, like, fight Delta. Iron Sand, like the omni, like the omnidirectional, like Iron Sand, like Lance attack that just shoots everywhere. There's so many possibilities in this fight depending on the route you take and stuff like that. Um, see, see, that's what's that's what's so good about the Akoski, bro. They have so much AOE. Yeah, I was gonna say that. In, 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 in difference to the, you know, Kara who has mostly single target one shot abilities, yeah. the Akoski just have a, a big AOE. Like Datara has his, you know. Big C explosion that used the Asasuke. And like you said, you know, you have the Yadamir stuff, the chaotic Shin with Tensei. It's, it's insane. Yeah, you gotta have this dude like spreading a Matarasu. And even if it doesn't hit, it's just gonna be annoying for dudes to absorb and stuff like that. So there really is pretty like large stuff. And obviously, you have like ways to mitigate this. Like Kawaki and Delta. Um, also, Jigen, or and Code, actually, like, they can all absorb, like, large-scale ninjutsu to a degree. Like, if Kisame, like, spits and, like, the battlefield turns to water, they gonna suck that right back up. It's gonna be, like, back to dry yeah. land and stuff like that. So, yes, yeah, 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 it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. So, there, there really is, like, a kind of interesting, but again, right, that's predicated on them, like, kind of taking that approach. Whereas, like, the Akatsuki just has, like, more members which is like with this large scale AOE type possibility in their in their lineup and stuff like that. There's all these like cool combo team mechanics you could do too. You could argue like 
Yeah, not this is like storm stuff, but you could say like saucery coats, like Dator's explosives and like iron sand and shit like that. Like just oh, yeah. Super cool. Make them even stronger. Super cool stuff. You got Deepa like shooting the cubes, like long range and stuff like that. Like there really is a lot. Um, I think Boro is actually very clutch in terms of AoE because of his virus and the fact that only really oh, the Sargon yeah. users are going to be aware of it. Talk about this for a second. I know you... Yeah, yeah. So so basically, Sarda could become aware and see the poison with her uh, two... No, no, we, we had three Tomoe Sharon done. So, you know, people like Itachi, uh, Pain, and stuff like that should easily, and Obito, should easily just be able to track them, right? But the the thing about it is that she really noticed too late because they did get affected by the poison. And someone like Itachi, who's already sick, yeah. if, if he gets hit with the poison, he, it's wrecked, <laughs> it's right? Over. Obito can maybe, you know, make it pass through his body. Pain is a dead body, and they, these this is a virus, so it attacks like your natural substances within your body so pain is just not affected at all and maybe kakazu if like his body is made out of all of the black tendrils i'm not sure yeah yeah there, there's definitely a, yeah it's, it's definitely a little weirder for kakazu too and then like even if it works he's gonna take down one heart like you got five more or th yeah. a couple more <laughs> and stuff like that so there's definitely a lot to this and i will say too the car side does have some aoe to be generous like a little bit like they do got like blasts like in beams and stuff like yeah. that so it's like Imagine like these two squads, right? Just drop their biggest AOE attack on both sides and stuff like that. Like does Shinra Tensei like neg all the beams? Like this pain himself yeah, just it, like it's kinda crazy. This, would it neg the virus and stuff like that? Just push it away. There's all this Wait. cool stuff. It's a lot, Brad. What, what you gotta say? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh another underrated ability though that I will say Jigen has, because you know we, we see Ishii. Have, yeah, right. He summons this big spike oh, ball with yeah. all of his, you know, things like that. He's basically just able to rain down all of his rods, right? And his rods are not like the Renegon rods that like stop or block chakra flow or stuff like that. He has absorbed chakra. Right? So if he's just passively absorbing all of the chakra back that he's used from these techniques, it's gonna get kind of crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing too. Kara can also just send these techniques right back, right? So it's like, even if they just start shooting out OD attacks, like Kara can just send that back with the exception of maybe a few abilities and whatnot. So it really is like kind of crazy to think about, like all the explosion and stuff like that. And obviously like th this is why like the micro matchups are so important and why we took time to discuss this because who kind of leads against who could actually just determine the rest of this fight. Like honestly, especially just with the hard hitters and stuff like that. So yeah. there, there really is a lot. And then you also have codes like claw marks, right? If he's just jumping all over the battlefield and stuff like that appearing on like appearing behind <laughs> kagazu slaying, like well i mean not slaying his through but just jumping on this dude like there's all these cool yeah. stuff what would you what you think about code in this battle too because i feel like he's kind of an yeah. under uh, mvp of sorts in some situations yeah so code especially the way he fights i see him getting rid of people like he done easy like he puts a claw mark right there you know he already has one stuck in jigen's dimension so you know he can use a claw mark grab he dying throw him in another dimension or he can start throwing the other people in front of attacks he can start redirecting attacks everywhere around the battlefield code is pretty much like uh, obito has the ability to slip through things but uh, code pretty much has that ability as yeah, well yeah yeah but like on a greater extent because he can basically reflect things, yeah right? yeah and he can pull people through if i'm not mistaken as well um which yeah, yeah which yeah. also which is also clutch but he could also just pull somebody from one side of the battlefield to the other. Like, imagine if he just grabbed, like, Itachi and then put him right in front of all nine car members. He's done. It's cooked. It's over, bro. Oh, yeah. He, he, he's, he's cooked. Or, or imagine if Delta, like, fires a durability negating beam. And, you know, he he, he grabs pain or a <laughs> diva pad from underneath and just throws him in front of the beam. He, he, he's done. That's crazy. <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, there really is a lot of cool stuff you can argue for, like, a lot of these members and stuff like that. Um, and again, right, like, you don't want to sleep on, like, Deepa or Victor and stuff like that. But again, like, the, the, their abilities are strong. Like, Deepa might be resistant to a lot of, like, conventional uh, ninjutsu with his, like, armor. But again, right, it's not going to be as crazy as, like, some of the higher AoE yeah. stuff, like, for the Akatsuki and whatnot. Um, and again, Conan's also as relevant because she can fly. And she can also place paper, paper bombs and stuff like that and disrupt the battlefield. And she can rain down, like, paper needles. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's pretty insane, too. So there really is a lot of, like, there, I think the aerial side is also, like, a good matchup and stuff like that. Like, you could have Saucery yeah. versus the Delta Twins. Um, also, like, you know, Co Conan versus them, which we kind of alluded to. Um, Delta versus uh, a Saucery is kind of an interesting one, though. What's your opinion on that? Like, what if that micro bit happens? Oh, yeah, that'd be crazy. Because Delta pretty much can't, he, she's not going to be able to absorb any of the buckets. Yeah. 
right? And her durability negating beams, right? They're, they're cool and all, but they're mostly used on people with regen, right? Uh, his puppets don't regen anyway. Yeah. He has like hundreds of them. So he'll be raining down all the puppets. She's wasting all of her fire and stuff like that. And you know, he still has poison. You know, e even though the poison might not affect her, uh, you can probably argue that just the, the liquid of it getting inside of her body, since she's completely robotic, could like still mess up her system in general. Yeah. Uh, he also has fire, you know, so- And it may like it, pressurized water and stuff like that. And I, I will say yeah. too, like Delta's also just, the regen negging beams that were like, gonna affect Naruto, like of all people, um, are very relevant, especially when you get into like, cause they're gonna be shooting them everywhere. Like how it affects like Kakuzu's like diamond morph. Like, is it just gonna, is he gonna block that? Yeah. Like with his hand or is it gonna go right through? Like, wh what's the deal with that? Like what's- Oh yeah, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> because if it goes right through, then that, that, that's getting rid of one of Kakuzu's greatest defense. That's what I'm saying. So there's a lot, there's a lot of interesting tough uh, stuff too. There's also like, okay, is, if Itachi like is able to Genjutsu any of the members, that could also be bad. Like that could just present an issue because you get to turn the numbers advantage as well. Um, and I will add too, like the Akatsuki do have a pretty distinct numbers advantage in this matchup because you have four of Kagazu's hearts, a hundred of Sasori's puppets, six paths of pain, which are <laughs> by some degree relative unless you argue like the diva path they all its chakra. And then all the pain yeah. summonings and stuff like that. So it's like, uh, it's like, bruh, like, okay, they could kind of turn this to where like, Carl might have some issues again, and it, it, you know, bro. You know what's even crazier, bro? Yeah. The 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 Ashura path from the path of pain. He can summon missiles. Yeah. Lasers. He, yeah, he has multiple arms. Then they have multiple summonings. It, it, I know we started the video saying it's a nine v nine, but that's kind of that's kind of <laughs> wrong. It, it's like more of a two hundred v nine, bro. It's actually kind of bad. It's actually kind of bad. And, yeah. and this is where like the Jigen stuff matters because. He's like, he's got all this stuff, but imagine if you actually removed him from the equation. How much of a stomp yeah. would this have been? How much? It would be, bro, a Koski would win by a landslide <laughs> you removed him, bro. It's bad, man. It's bad. And this also isn't getting to like Obito and how we could probably like Izanagi from like across the battlefield and stuff like that. Oh, you yeah. know, it's just all this nonsense. So there really is like nine infinite ways you could go with stuff like that. And again, right, there's all these like minutia you could get into and stuff like that. Like there's all these like micro points that you could make like certain assertions on. But like at the end of the day, we're just kind of like left guessing a little bit because we just haven't seen these abilities like interact with like Boruto era yeah. like characters and stuff like that. So there just really is a lot to. Is there anything you want to add to like the large scale discussion and shit like that? Like, you have like, the last thing I will really add to a large scale discussion is, you know, a adding Jigen into the equation again. You know, it is a 200 v 9, but 190 of them can be shrunk. Exactly. Right? exactly. He, he shrinks all the puppets, he shrinks all the hearts. So, so, so it's it, it's really like the only people who he can't shrink is Obito. Yeah, he's shrinking all of Itachi's arsenal, and Genjutsu doesn't work. Yeah, on him. shrinking every pain body, and if he doesn't shrink the pain bodies, he's shrinking the rods that you know is able to transmit. Oh, that's a good point. I like bodies. that. I like that. That's he. So yeah, yeah, and then like, and, and then like, here's the thing too, because we brought up like the Sasori point. You could also argue that Delta's beams could also just cut the chakra threads. Because Omo in the war, he just cuts the threads with a regular sword. Like, he just cuts oh, them. So right. imagine, like, this laser beam just slicing right through them. And bros, like, third Kaze Kage puppet or all of them just fall out the sky. It's over. What's he doing? Oh, yeah. He's, he's good. They're, they're good. <laughs> oh, and bro, Kawaki and Cody love to use, like, scientific ninja tool hands and claws. Oh, yeah. Right? So them just swinging around their big claws, boss. <laughs> It's it, it just cutting around all the things. There, it's insane. It's insane. So there really is like a nigh infinite amount of ways like you can argue this matchup. It really is like just straight up chaos. The battlefield itself matters too. Um, I will say though, in my <laughs> opinion, like I think Kara has a good way to like middle middle uh, mitigate any battlefield changes just due to like they can um, absorb any like ninjutsu that would alter it and stuff like that. So the best yep. thing I see is like these guys are in a field. It's just gonna be like dust clouds and stuff like that. Which again, like you could even argue may actually hinder some of the Akatsuki side. Cause like the, the Renegon isn't really able to see through dust clouds and stuff like that. It has a oh, big, yeah. a big, a big problem with that. 
um, how that would affect the, 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 the summonings and whatnot. But again, right, it's just like, it's all these micro ways that you could really argue this all over the battlefield and stuff like that. Do you have any other, like, big scenario, like, Storm 4 boss fight uh, scenes that you see going on in this fight? You got anything to add? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I actually have one more, right? Because how Ashin Koji gets to fire from that, he basically makes a big, huge summoning sign, yeah. right? So, if they were just all fighting, you know, they're all in a battle royale, dodging, throwing all these attacks... And Kash and Koji, like, just summons a giant fire on the ground, right? Jigen can go to another dimension. Even if he catches some of his uh, his teammates in crossfire oh, since yeah. he is just a snake, he's taken out so many of the Akashki as well. Yeah. But, like, it, it'll just erupt with flames that never go out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I agree. And you brought up an interesting point, too, that I want to add on real quick and, like, bolster. The Kara side can actually afford to misfire, where the Akatsuki cannot, which is a big thing. Because yep. their AoE may actually have an inverse effect with, the with, with like, the, and, uh, mo most, if not all, the members cannot regen, right? Whereas most of Kara has, like, you know, like, code can just get away. Kawaki, Delta, like, Bora, they all have these, like, insane regen or ability to, like, extend limbs and, like, come back from a certain amount of damage. That is a big thing, whereas, like... The teamwork, though, argument also just may not be relevant because they don't really need to work together and stuff like that. Kind of like Universe 7, where, like, these big dudes are just going around beating everybody up. And then, like, oh, yeah. the weaker <laughs> dudes are, like, go on. It's like, what happened to the plan, bro? It's just there, there, there's, a, there's a whole plethora of discussion to be had there as well. So that's also something interesting to know. Like, the teamwork actually may not matter as well. Um, and then again, there's all this like crazy stuff you can argue, um, like Obito, like bringing people into like Itachi's Totsuka Blade, as he would might, he would definitely have a lot of knowledge on that. You could just argue all this stuff and stuff like that. But I think we did a good job, like summarizing the discussion. Um, I want to add though, if you had to like add a conclusion, like a concluding segment to this video, who do you lean towards, like in this discussion? I'll give my take, like you know, on like who I lean towards. So like, yeah, yeah, I I would lean towards the Akashi if it just wasn't for my boy G. You know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm gonna have to go with Kara on getting carried on <laughs> Jigen's back. Jigen picks them all up. Puts them in baby strollers and carries them to daycare, bro. It's, it's crazy. And, and it's interesting. I'm probably on the opposite end, but again, for the same reason, like Jigen carrying and stuff like that. And again, right? Because this is equal stats, I'm gonna be honest, with, with the exception for like a lot of the how the a lot of abilities work, um, you can really just say whatever, and it probably applies here. You know what I'm saying? So it just yeah. they're, 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 I'm gonna be real with you. Like there's like a lot of micro like interaction, a lot of like it deducing and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you could just really say whatever you want. And stuff like that. So, in my opinion, like, to give closing arguments, and I, I'm, I'll give, like, Troy his. I, I think, like, the Akatsuki just have, like, more consistent high tiers um, with larger AoE. But, again, like, less regen. And, and, obviously, Jigen's the big issue who, like, can, could be argued to just win every 1v1. So, and, you know, so there really is a lot to it. Um, what do you have closing thoughts? Like, give your closing argument for, like, Kara and stuff like that. And, like, we'll just call it. Yeah, video. so, basically, to end, to end it all, right? I, I, I think Jigen goes in there, shrinks most of the members in their abilities, <laughs> you know, enlarges rods in their throats or heads. Oh. He, he can dis, he can dismember he done, and if Kakazu's already gone and taken care of, he can't really do anything. Yeah. You know, blasting away Kakazu with an energy beam. And once he comes into contact with Obito, you know, they have a little battle. He Obito ends up in a dimension where time doesn't flow, and he's gone. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, so... That's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you did. This was really fun to make. Shout, shout out Troy for coming through and like preaching the Boruto greatness and all that stuff because a lot of people aren't happy with Boruto stuff. But I, I think it's great yes, um, repping the Boruto side. Go check him out if you liked anything you heard. Again, leading authority, if not one of the most leading authority, just watch him. You're going to be right. That's just, just Thank you. Much, much appreciated, man. Thank you for having me on. This is a goaded video. Very fun topic. Definitely was uh thinking that car just smashed before coming in here but now i can see you know a, a huge side to be made for the yeah it's really a fun topic so definitely discuss down below give me your best reasons for who wins and why i'm sure there's a scenario we didn't think of as there's so many that you could definitely make a case for so let me know what you guys think and i'll catch you next time